Hello guys, people keep asking me what are the best practices to do this or that in Laravel. And Laravel as a framework is pretty flexible, so often there are no best, absolute best practices. But there are really bad practices that could cause performance, security or architectural issues. So I published an article on Laravel Daily.com for premium members this time, collecting 17 so far bad practices or things I identified as bad practices. And in this video, I will read you first five of them, which I consider the most kind of the worst bad practices. Other ones are debatable, maybe not so bad practices. And this is actually based on my older ebook. So two years ago, I experimented with Gumroad and released separately from Laravel Daily.com separately a few products on Gumroad just to try it out. And one of those was a collaboration with another person, Bilal Haidar, and together we compiled 35 bad practices. So I decided to kind of refresh it to Laravel new versions and removed the ones that were really kind of debatable and not so bad practices. So let's talk about the worst ones in this video. And at the end of this video, I will actually talk about Gumroad separately, about my story, how to sell products there. So if you want to sell your own ebook or software, it's really easy to start on Gumroad. And I will briefly show you how at the end of this video. Anyway, what is a bad practice? It's some piece of code which currently or potentially in the future would cause really bad damage like security issues, performance issues, or maintainability issues for other new developers. So this is my personal definition of bad practice. And bad practice number one is kind of elephant in the room. N plus one query is by far the number one reason for performance issues whenever I see that question on forums or somewhere to debug the slow Laravel application. The classical example is from the docs. So you need to eager load instead of doing book author, you need to have book with here and then you avoid many queries. And you can deal with those many queries on three levels. So I identified first, if you do have those n plus one query problem, you may find and fix them with Laravel debug bar or alternatives like telescope, clockwork and others then also you can adopt a habit in your code to use eager loading properly or relatively new addition in Laravel 8.43 from what I remember is preventing the lazy loading, preventing the n plus one query on service provider level locally. So in case there is an n plus one query happening, Laravel would detect and throw an exception. And this article, by the way, will contain a lot of external links to read more about everything. So that's bad practice number one. Bad practice number two is also related to Eloquent, but from another angle. We can cause performance issues by downloading too much data from database into memory. Classical example is loading the full relationship, although what you need is just the count of relationship or maybe one field of that relationship, but you're loading all the data and comments table, for example, may contain very long comments. So that could totally pollute your memory. A better example example should be this with count because all you need is just the count here. Another example could be loading just the fields that you need. So select title instead of loading all the posts, which also can contain quite a lot of data if you load all the columns. And both of those bad practices kind of you wouldn't feel that in the beginning. This is a common feeling when you're starting the project, you don't see any performance issues. Those performance issues start happening much later. If you're lucky and the project takes off, then with more simultaneous users and with more data, performance issues would really bite you back. So in terms of bad practice number two, just load the data that you actually need. Bad practice number two is not checking the relationships or not checking the objects and chaining in Laravel in various forms. Again, a classical example with relationship, but with that idea, I wanted to cover the general chaining. So Laravel allows you to do something, then another object, then another object, then maybe some function stuff like that. And that works like magic. But what if that project user is is empty, soft, deleted or something like that, then you get the classical error of property on null. And there are various ways how to fix that. For example, you can use this PHP operator or with default on eloquent level, I have a separate tutorial. Again, the link is here. But general, the bad practice is not checking those intermediate objects. Another example, when you load something from 
database, you have first, and then you immediately use the column from that first, assuming that it always exists. What if it doesn't? In some cases, you get exceptions. In some cases, you get empty values returned, and then your users may be confused in the browser. A better practice is just check all the objects and do something if something does not exist. Bad practice number four, which is actually not only about Laravel, it's about generally building the APIs, but it's so common, I've seen that a lot. In Laravel API code, if something goes wrong, people still return JSON with 200 status code or without any code here, which means it would still return 200. And the error message, the error fact is described in the body of JSON. This is a bad practice if you consider how front-end developer who is on your team or externally, how they would feel when they get the 200 status code, which means for them that it's successful, but actually the code failed. Really, really confusing. And the problem is so common on the internet that it deserved some memes on the internet. I found this one on Reddit and you may find other alternatives also on the internet. So just be consistent with your API status code returns, especially 200 versus errors like 400 or 500 codes. And bad practice number five, this is where I will switch to another browser when I'm logged in as a premium member. So bad practice number five is trusting user data without validation. This is again kind of a common topic with just a few examples from practical projects. So classical XSS attack is if you allow users to control the text inside of those brackets. I'll actually zoom that in. So if someone in their profile in the about me profile is allowed to enter HTML, they may also enter something like script alert something or something even worse in JavaScript code. So use these only if you control the data inside or you properly validate that. Another example of not validating data enough is using request all, which seems safe if you do it like this, but this is actually with security issue. Let me explain. So you have the form request class, which validates some data. But if you use request all here, that request all will contain all the post data, not only the fields that have been validated, which means, for example, if someone passes is admin equals one as a part of that request, and you happen to have a fillable database field is admin, then it doesn't matter if it is validated here or not it will still be passed as a parameter because you use request all. Instead, here you should use request validated, which will contain only the data validated in this form request class. So these are just two kind of classical examples of that bad practice, but the overall message is always validate the data from your users and never ever trust them. And this is where we get to section number two of that article, 17 bad practices in total. So this one is available only for premium members. If you want to get that, I will link that in the description below. Premium members get not only this article and other premium tutorials, but also courses. At this moment, it's more than 60 courses on Laravel with thousands of members already. So I'm not even really sure if I need to advertise that anymore. My style is kind of publishing something for free on YouTube and stuff that we spend more time on with the team is for premium members only. So for example, section two will start with not so bad practice of not using route names. This is debatable. And if you don't use route names, it will be kind of fine and you may not even notice. But if you do notice, it may be very inconvenient. So practices like that will be listed below. And now the final part of this video, I promised you to talk about Gumroad. So a few years ago, I experimented with that and released a few products, two of them are ebooks and two of them were software products, but basically it's the same thing. Gumroad allows you to upload some file or several files and make them downloadable for some price. So here's how Gumroad backend dashboard looks like for myself. And here's how much I've earned in 2022 when I did advertise that. Now these days I don't advertise those products because they're kind of outdated. So for you to have a general feeling how to use Gumroad, you add product, 
new product. Then for example, let's take my ebook of freelancing. This is actually maybe not that much outdated. So you may still purchase that one if you wish. But anyway, you just add the product description, then you add cover, thumbnail, product info, then details of pricing and others. Then in content, you actually upload the file and that's it. Basically, if you want to start selling your info product like ebook or downloadable software, for example, like Laravel project, I do recommend Gumroad as it is easy to start. At least it used to be in 2022, but it doesn't seem to be changed at all since then. But yeah, going back to the main topic of this video, bad practices in Laravel, would you add something to that list of top five crucial bad practices that would kind of break the app or cause performance, architectural or security issues? Let's discuss in the comments below. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.